very much for, for all coming on a Saturday. I know many other things to do, but I really appreciate the effort of, of being here. We're really excited uh, of telling our story. I think it's, it's really a, a process of education, not only to, to patients, but physicians. That's how you know, I got involved, really, of not knowing pretty much nothing about adult stem cells until I met Neil five years ago, and I was blown away of what he was doing in Costa Rica at that time. And I say, it's, it's amazing how we, as, as even physicians, imagine how you expect patients to know of that option. We're not even aware of the capacity of what adult stem cells can do. So when I met him, I said, and actually this was just a, a small story uh, through a common friend physician who had a heart disease. And uh, he had a, what we call a cardiomyopathy, a really bad heart disease that the outcome was not good. So he looked at many options and nothing really that he looked at uh, was gonna change the outcome. Uh, so he looked and looked and he found uh, Neil in Costa Rica. And at that time they had not treated anybody with heart disease and he told me, he told him, it makes so much sense, treat me. Well, he got treated. He improved dramatically his heart function, so he calls me up one day, he was in Costa Rica, and that's how they came to Panama, and after talking to him and, and meeting Neil and, and all the science behind it, I was blown away. So I said, you know, we gotta do this, you know, we gotta push it, and, and that's how I found a, you know, and I'll go through the, the story how, you know, why in Panama. These are some of the medical conditions that, that we treat, but again, as discussed before, we have a panel of doctors and we review and we're really careful into assessing what makes medical sense, and, and that's really important. We review every case, and every case is individual. There, there are factors that play a role of why a patient may be a better candidate than others, and there are other factors that really uh, make it very difficult and we're realistic and we, we are really upfront with the patients. You know, we wish we can say it's a cure for everything or even for the conditions that we treat, but it's not. And, and we are really, and that's I think a key factor that when I met Neil, it, it's really, uh, we try to be really upfront with patients and uh, we feel we can help them in a lot of these conditions that there's medical rationale and, uh, and that's what we tell them. But one thing that we pretty much guarantee is the safety, because I think we have enough uh, evidence in the cases that we treat in the literature that it's a really safe, as discussed before, procedure. The benefits in most of these conditions are good, but you know there's no guarantees. So Stem Cell Institute, again, after we had that meeting, uh, I really was, was in a mission that we had to do something. So we looked at what was there legally, and fortunate for us, there was legal precedent in Panama out of a law that was passed in 2004 against embryonic, but it was in favor of adult stem cell therapy. And uh, so that was really amazing that it was passed at that time, but that was really the first step that we we're really encouraged that we can do something in Panama. So that, that was the first step. Then we not only had that, but we wanted to present the project. And uh, as Neil was saying, the, the lab was created in this techno park, which is really amazing facility in what we call the city of knowledge. And we had to present a whole project to them. They have their own internal reviews and we passed them. But that was not enough. So we went through the equivalent of the FDA in Panama, and uh, we presented everything, what we had, all our data, all our studies, and they were really impressed with what we had. So they licensed us. So for me as a physician, that was really important because we understand the controversies, and it's still an evolving field, but uh, for us to feel secure what we were doing, we needed that backup. Thankfully. Panama has a little more open-minded than the U.S., and, uh, and that really allowed us to, to start there. You know, we've encountered obstacles because there's still, again, a lot of ignorance and through education of physicians of what's happening with stem cells really has helped us to, to grow, and the results, at the end of the day, that's really the bottom line. When, when you get these cases that 
are going to come up to speak after we finish and what makes our day. And when you see somebody with a spinal cord injury who's walking or a little girl with cerebral palsy who's improving dramatically after treatment, that's truly what in medicine a lot of times is frustrating. I'm an internal medicine physician. It was, you, know, you were putting patients on more medications, but their quality of life never improved. Their blood pressure was better and their cholesterol was better, but they still feel felt pretty bad. So when you can, you, when you can change somebody's um, quality of life, that, that's precious. And that's truly what has kept me pushing and battling this uh, beautiful field that is adult stem cells. So this is the institute that we have in Panama. Again, the, the clinic is where we evaluate the patients and, uh, and we treat them. Most of these procedures are done in Panama City. A lot of people know that Panama City is somewhere in Central America, but they're not clear you know, where we are and, and what's happening there. You know, it's a big metropolis, as you can see. And uh, we're really proud of what's happening in Panama. It's grown immensely in the last six years, maybe too much for my taste. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a thriving country. You know, we have all sorts of technologic improvements in the last six years, and, uh, and a lot of people have moved their companies, et cetera. So it, it's, it's really, um, I'm really proud to say that Panama has, has grown, and having this company there really is, is an exciting thing. So, you know, I can't not talk about Panama and I mentioned again we have the Panama Canal. You know, that, that's what we're, we're famous for. Again, this is really as Neil was saying, we're really upfront and clear and transparent what we have and we're really proud of what we're able to, to create in, in the lab, which is really where everything happens. And uh, we have a state-of-the-art facility and, uh, and that for us is really important because the quality and the characterization of the cells, which at the end of the day is what truly does the job for these patients, is really important. So we have, again, this facility that we show it to the patients, the patient, you know, do a tour of it, and, uh, and they're really impressed when they see, again, that this is something that's well done and is evaluated and, and, and credited, which is really key. This is just a flow cytometry, how we characterize the cells and all these that was mentioned already. Again, a lot of the cells that are preserved in liquid nitrogen. Just briefly, because a lot of has been talked about the fat and, and how we found about the benefit that it has. And I think it was mentioned before the, the, you know, the properties of the fat stem cells and all these type of different cells apart from the mesenchymal stem cells that help significantly into controlling that immune system that we were talking about. And that's why most of these benefits that we have seen in the patients are, are really dramatic. Once you control the immune system, you allow the body to, to heal itself. And that's what we're seeing in most of these autoimmune conditions that we treat. The famous liposuction again, this is an actual patient. And this is a nice result of it. And uh, again, we take all that material and again, after it's digested and evaluated in the lab, we, we obtain a very small amount, but that's where the cells are. A lot of people say, well, why, if they're there, they're not helping me. Well, the fat creates that medium where they trap it. It doesn't allow the cells to do their job. Some may escape, but most of them are trapped by the fat. So once you release them into the, into the environment, to the, the whole body, by the cells themselves and by the factors, and that's something that we'll keep emphasizing because a lot of what adult stem cells do, I'm gonna take that picture out, I know it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of what the adult stem cells do is truly the production of these factors and these healing trophic factors that we call it is probably most 80% of the benefits we see and, and they travel. That's why a lot of the procedures that we do are IV, and, we, and people say, well, how can these cells through the vein go to the areas of where I'm hurting or I have the problem? Well, it's because these factors and the cells migrate. They are, again, as mentioned before, 
kind of intelligent cells. They, they home or they go to the areas where there is damage and, that's, and they help to control the immune system. So those two big factors is really what promotes and what we see and why it can help all these conditions. These are main, primarily the procedures or the, or the administration routes that we use intravenous, intramuscular for some, intrathecal, which is in the spine and people with spinal cord injury, obviously, and, and, and MS also. And intraarticular in patients with, with arthritis. I'm going to talk briefly of, of some of the, of the conditions just to give you some highlights of, of what we do. Uh, the patients have to stay for a little longer in a lot of these conditions because when, when you do the liposuction, you create an area of inflammation. So if you process that fat and administer it like the next day or the same day, guess where most of these cells will go? To the area you just created inflammation. So if you administer the cells intravenously, you want to wait typically a week more or less for that process to subside so then they will go to all these areas that they can repair. The ones that go into the joint, again, can be done pretty quickly because they are directed where the damage is in the hips or the knees, etc. And we've had really amazing success with arthritis. We have a great lady here today that I know she doesn't want to be acknowledged, but uh, it, it's that's what makes her day. You know, she was having tremendous amount of, of hip pain and uh, affecting her golf, which you know, being a golfer, I know that's <laughs> priority. And uh, and it's amazing. Again, she's not 100% better, but she's significantly better, and her quality of life has improved. And it's been a short period of time since she got the injections, and that's what we see with osteoarthritis. It is really a, a, an easy condition in the sense that the damage is localized, and these cells have been shown to even improve the cartilage. And now we're trying to document that in some studies that we're working on. In rheumatoid arthritis, again, the, the, the main procedure is, is removal of the fat and the, the application of the stromal vascular fracture of the fat into IV. Sometimes in patients who are very symptomatic, like knees or hands, we can do direct injections in some of the cells and they get great benefits. This is briefly another case of rheumatoid arthritis, which really amazing, he's a local patient from Panama that he was frustrated with all the discomfort he was having. He went through all the gamma medications, he was even an embryo, and he was still very symptomatic. Having, you know, typically a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, it takes him sometimes a couple hours to recover from the stiffness they get. And uh, so he came, he we talked for a long time, and uh, he said, you know what, let's do it. You know, I'm, I'm so, my quality of life is, is so much affected that I, I really feel this is a great option. He talked to his rheumatologist, which obviously he was against the procedure. He said, well, there's no evidence about it and don't do it. But he said, you know, forget it. I, I don't want to take these drugs that are causing me more side effects. So he did it. And uh, amazingly enough, he got significantly better. You know, as you see, his his morning stiffness improved dramatically. The, the ability to walk now is it, incredible. He has a place in the beach and he's walking two miles a day. And the markers that we can objectively measure, the inflammation, that's called the set rate, as you see, improved dramatically from 40 to 5. He went back to his rheumatologist and he told him, well, what do you think? I said, well, I don't know what they're doing, but it's, it's a good thing. And uh, so... <laughs> So I met with him and now he's, he's a physician who, who, you know, we have in our side in the sense of understanding. We, we took him to the lab and he saw and he, and he was impressed and that's really what, uh, what's amazing. This is, again, the publication, uh, what we did regarding rheumatoid arth arthritis. Heart failure is another interesting condition that uh, we've had really good success. There's many studies that apply some of the cells directly. Again, we have found that the same mechanism that we talked about, these cells travel, and uh, by stimulating them, we have, there's some studies with ascorbic acid and how it helps to induce these mesenchymal stem cells to become cardiomyocytes. So we've seen in, uh, 
in, in our patients that we treated some pretty interesting improvements in their heart function. And that's a condition that's pretty easy and objective way to measure it. You have an echocardiogram, which is where you can find how the heart is pumping, and you follow them up several months later, and you see how the, the heart function improves. So it, it makes it a really good uh, objective way of, of measuring it. So we're really happy with the success we're having with heart failure. This is a publication that we base a rationale for it, and uh, again, that, that's really an important factor. Autism slash, I put cerebral palsy because the protocol is very similar. You know, autism is a, you know, obviously still poorly understood condition. There's many factors that have been attributed to what is the underlying process, you know, and there's a lot of theories of this and that, but I think the underlying or the bottom line with a lot of it is there's issues with immunity, and that's a problem with the gut that was mentioned before, and there's issues of damage or, or lack of blood supply to the brain. So after Dr. Smith and Dr. Riordan had that coming of the minds of looking at rationales, it made kind of sense that these cells, the CD34s, that improve or create new vessels or improve blood supply, and the mesenchymals that help the gut improve the immune system would work for autism. And uh, we've been amaz amazingly surprised. It, it's really satisfying as a physician when you have a child, and I know parents who are here with children with autism is, is frustrating because of uh, the issues these kids encounter. And with the, when you can help them, and sometimes it could be a mild to moderate improvement, and sometimes it could be very dramatic, it, it's, it's really amazing. The same goes with cerebral palsy, and we'll have a case that is presented here which uh, is, is amazing. Again, lack of blood supply, you improve the blood supply in these young kids and uh, in some cases pretty dramatic results. This is again the journal that was mentioned before and this is just briefly uh, another, it, it's an older, 22 year old with the autism spectrum disease and uh, the mother brought him because he couldn't handle anymore. He was so aggressive. He tore his clothes every day. He was just unmanageable. And she was so frustrated, she went through all the gammas of modalities of treatments that Dr. Smith mentioned before, and no improvement whatsoever, nonverbal, very aggressive. So when she came here, we, we talked about what, you know, what we can do for them. And, uh, and she said, if he can be manageable, less aggressive, I would be ecstatic. Well. We treated him, you know, the physician also was really uh, non, you know, very op opposed to what we were doing for the kid, but again, the mother was really um, amazing, and, and after discussing the, the case, we treated him, and as you saw, in two months later, uh, oh, sorry, I'm talking about, Well, we missed that one, Andres. <laughs> well, anyway, th this kid, their behavior was significantly better, you know, in the sense that less aggressive. He, the mother came to one of our meetings and, and she couldn't be so ecstatic in that uh, she got that benefit of the kid being much more manageable. And uh, so those are the behavior changes that kids with autism get. These are just one of the proposed mechanisms of these CD34 cells that we've been talking about is improving the blood supply and by that mechanism improving the nerve endings that a, a lot of these kids with autism have kind of, the best way to describe it, kind of a short circuit in different areas in the brain. <coughs> Spinal cord obviously is another dramatic condition that we've been really pleasantly happy with the results we're getting. Again, very traumatic condition. Uh, as described before, the nerve, the central nervous system, very difficult to heal. But the mechanism we talked about before of these factors that are secreted that help with the, with the healing process and controlling and improving the blood supply. So we're really excited of what we've been encountering with spinal cord 
Obviously, the younger the patient, the better outcomes they are. The, the time of the lesion is really key in people who've had an injury less than a year. The outcomes are, are better, but we've treated patients who've had uh, the injuries have been several years after with some responses. There are some classifications of neurologic status in patients with, with spinal cord that we can objectively measure, what's called the ASIA, and we've been able to document a significant improvement from bladder improvement to erectile uh, dysfunction issues, so it, it's really exciting. And uh, I'm going to mention that, again, we talked about groups, university groups in the U.S. watching or interested in what we're doing, and uh, the University of Miami, specifically the Project for Cure Paralysis, uh, came to our center. They were really amazed of some of the results we were getting, and Dr. Barth Green, which is the head of, of, of Project for Cure for Paralysis, came, saw our center, and was really impressed. So we've been working. It, it's been a, a battle, even when you're trying to do a study is still a lot of obstacles are placed on the development because of financial issues, because of political issues. So even despite that, we've been going through it and we're really excited that we hopefully we can start a, a study by mid, you know, couple of months hopefully. So that's obviously really important for us is to having the, the clinical trials to, so we can have in black and white, the results that we're already seeing in our patients that we're treating. Briefly, I think it was mentioned before, the, the application is really important for us. Again, when patients apply through our website, we review every case. We request a lot of information because we feel we want to get the best picture that we can without seeing the patient right there. And uh, because, uh, again, we try to make sure that we're giving you the best odds of improvement. And there are some conditions that simply there's no medical rationale and we unfortunately deny them. And, uh, and, uh, but for, for us, that's really important that we are really strict in our criteria so we at least uh, improve uh, the likelihood of somebody responding. So after they apply, Dr. Caballeros here reviews it. He, we discuss it on our weekly meeting and many times consult with other physicians to determine the feasibility of, of treating this patient. So it's, again, that, that's something that sets us apart for many people doing this, and that, I feel really proud that that's something that we do. So in, in conclusions, I would say, again, that adult stem cell therapy in the years that I've been involved is a safe procedure. There's many ongoing clinical trials that are going to document that and that are really documenting it already. Uh, of the efficacy in these conditions that we're treating is not a miracle cure and it does, it's not a quick fix or anything but it can you know improves the likelihood of response in many conditions that there's really not much to offer and the important thing is we are allowing your body to help itself so it's a really a natural way and there's no doubt in my mind that even though there's a lot of political forces that make it hard to implement is the future of medicine. And I oh, hopefully, I feel proud that we have it in Panama, but I don't want to be protective. I really want this to get out and this to be available for everybody. One quick point, when we evaluate these patients, not only stem cells, I think it's a complement of different things. And assessing the body as a whole, understanding factor that Dr. Smith was saying about the adrenal glands, the status of the hormones, nutrition, exercise are key components. One thing is not sufficient, so you have to look at the patient as a whole. I got involved even before I got into stem cells with the wellness, and that's why I met Bill Courtright, and it was really exciting because for the first time I can speak with somebody who truly was not a physician, even though he's a physician assistant, but knew more about medical physiology than any doctor I knew. And he blended the medical field with the gym aspect, the wellness, we truly, and uh, it's, it's incredible. When you saw somebody, their quality of life improved by the right exercise, by the right nutrition, by the right supplements. So this is really taking it a step beyond. You do all that and you implement the stem cells and you see the results because that's one thing that we do also. We do a panel of lab that are the routine labs plus we assess 
key hormones that make a big difference in the ability to the body to recover, like assessing the adrenal glands, which is a key gland assessing thyroid that was talked before. So again, it's a whole complemental process that allows a, the patient to benefit the most when you implement that. So I just want to shout out Bill, thanks for everything. And